following program is a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. And co-hosts, Mike Tussaw from KnowYourOptionsInc.com and Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Options Express. Don't spend time worrying about your broker. At Options Express, security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures, all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio to open your free account. Options Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. All right, and that rockin' music means it's time once again for the Option Block, your bi-weekly source of options, wit, and wisdom, punctuated by moments of sheer insanity and oftentimes hilarity. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as the old Options Insider Radio Network, and I am joined by a relative gaggle of returning co-hosts on the old all-star panel today starting off with the man with the beret the man freshly back from his honeymoon in lovely paris france one big tim navabi from options express mr tinov welcome back to the land of the shall we say beretless <laughs> yeah <laughs> that definitely don't see those around here I, I think that's stinky I, cheese either. I think that's a look you could pull off, though, you know? Uh, I don't know. You get that bouffant <laughs> dew, you throw the beret on it. I don't know. It might be an intriguing uh, <laughs> intriguing combination. I can hear the ladies out there swooning as we speak. Oh, boy. But, yes, Tim, now, ladies, you can swoon all you like, but Tim is off the market. And I met I met his better half a few weeks ago before the uh, during the festivities, and uh, she will hunt you down, ladies, if uh, <laughs> if you if you make some contact. So stay away. No, I'm just kidding. She was lovely, a lovely woman, and congratulations, Thank you very much, Mark. congratulations again, sir. Thank you very much. And speaking of lovely women, we are also joined on the program today by one Uncle Mike Tusa from Know Your Options, Inc. Uncle Mike, lovely as usual, sir. Good to see you again, virtually, of course. All right. Now, I know Apple's down a little bit, but you don't have to call me a woman. Come on now. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, just cut right to the chase, why don't you, with uh, Apple, of course, the big name, coming out in the after hours in a wee bit, so we'll see what's... Uh... Actually, it's not till Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, wrong one. I had that on my list, but that is actually... Apple is next week. I thought that was a little soon for that one. You so... realize how much you scared the crap out of me when you saw it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set for it to happen on Tuesday, but I'm not, I wasn't ready for it after... I actually, I literally called Apple Investor Relations just to verify <laughs> that, just when I saw that in your email. <laughs> That's what I get for uh, one misstroke on the old keyboard, a heart attack off in St. Charles. Uh, That's right. <laughs> I forgot that is your... Uh, I think you were doing it. Yeah, I, I think you were doing it to mess with me. If I, if I knew how easy it was to uh, to mess with you, I would now, from now on, baby, Apple <laughs> earnings every other week. What's that special dividend in Apple today? Right, yeah. <laughs> did you put, uh, just send email reminders? Did you hear about gold <laughs> or just anything? Reverse 10 for 1 stock split in Apple? Yeah. 6,000 strike now? <laughs> oh, crap. I got to go. <laughs> All right. And last but certainly not least is the man with the pensive stare on Skype, 
Also, the man with the lobster bib, one Andrew Giovinazzi of OptionPit.com. Andrew, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you. I'm, I am putting my lobster down, and I am now ready to consume options. <laughs> <laughs> that was lame the first time. It's it was even, even better, <laughs> even better the second time. The delivery <laughs> if it got even more stilted, if that's possible. It was fantastic. Um, but no. <laughs> Yes, you know it's important, listeners, when Andrew decides it's time to stop shoveling the lobster in and it's time to start talking about them options. And speaking of them options, it's time to dive into the trading block. The trading block. All right, and welcome to the trading block. This is, of course, the portion of the show where we discuss, surprise, surprise, what is trading, what is moving the old market in, in spite of a, an errant keystroke and or malicious keystroke to Uncle Mike Tussaud today. Apple is not indeed announcing after the bell today. They are still scheduled for good old April 24th after the bell, but there are quite a few... Quite a few players coming out right now as we speak. But first, let's talk about the day's worth of action. We saw most of the major indices down about half a percent or so. The S&P down about eight handles to 1377. The Dow down about 67 to 12,964. The good old tech-heavy Nasdaq, a.k.a. Apple Plus, down about <laughs> down about 24 handles to 3007 and the VIX cash down about a quarter of a point to 18.36 or about 1.5% on the day. Let's start there, Mr. A. Um, I know it was an interesting day. We were down a little bit more during the middle of the session. We kind of culled some of those uh, or kind of clipped some of those, the worst of the down move towards the middle of the, or towards the end of the day. Um, so we saw, I think, some interesting... Uh, or perhaps I guess on your on your perspective, maybe less than interesting movements in the old in the old VIX today. Are you guys uh, are you guys kind of playing wait and see out in Vol Land now, or are you starting yeah, to fade again yeah. to the downside, or what's what's the deal? I, you know, I have one of these opinions where I I don't mind selling some of some volatility here, but I don't want to be short the gamma right now. So the type of VIX trades are more. I'm not as interested in buying lots of VXX puts, um, more on along the lines of kind of some condors and stuff like that in June, where I'm trying to sell the vol, but I'm really not, I am in no way bigger stepping in heavily right now. I think we are in, uh, we are in volatility no man's land. I think kind of everything looks sort of fairish, and you got the Europeans ruining our party on one side, but I think overall earnings have been very good on the other side. So I think those two things pushing against each other makes the market go nowhere. Um, so we're, gonna be, oh, we're up 50, down 50, up 100, down 100. Um, so I am not thrilled to be short a lot of gamma, although I think um, you could go broke <laughs> owning short-term volatility right now. Yeah, short the guts, hold on to the wings for those crazy uh, Eurozone people or the uh, implosion at Apple or whatever the case may be over the coming week that's going to uh, potentially send us into a tizzy. And otherwise, right. and, otherwise and just uh, pop your tums and ride your, uh, ride your short gamma. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we got. I, you know, I kept looking, the, you know, the, v, the VXX is still trading. I would say a very, it still had about a dollar and a quarter move today up and down almost twice. It had a dollar range and then a buck and a quarter range after that. So intraday, the thing is a monster. Um, so there is still plenty of intraday movement in the vol products. So I, I don't, I don't see any kind of, uh, there is no fun trend there. I just, I don't think I want to own volatility in general at this level. I can't, can't get happy with that. Hey, there's a, there's no shame in not taking your ball and going home, sir. You don't, you don't have to play every day, you know? It's kind of what I said. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look tough bouncing it on the side of the street. You know? Like, all right. I don't want to play right now. I'm going to play later. I don't want to play, but I might have some game at some point. Well, you think you're too good for us? Come on. I am too good for Although I, I did make my first Apple Options trade of the year this week. Oh, you and Grigas. You see, Grigas uh, sent out his, uh, his trade of the day. He shorted a call spread. Upside call spread, the 605, 610 call spread. He's not here to uh, gloat 
about his winnings today. Maybe Tim will have to do that for him. <laughs> or or uh, talk about how much anxiety he had on, you know, Tuesday. <laughs> was, he, was he sweating that one out pretty good? Yeah, he, yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, that was funny, actually, because we were talking, Andrew, John, and I, on the last show about what is the optimal trade size for Apple. You know, how much cash you need to have in the account and what kind of trade size you were slinging and how much you need to trade different sizes. And, you know, John was slinging the one lots just like we were talking, uh, just like we were saying. So he's, uh, he's experimenting with different trade sizes, shall we say. He's not, he's not slinging Navabi size these days in Apple. Oh, jeez. But then there are a few who are Mr. 100 Up AAPL. Hey, he just got married. There's no more 100 Up AAPL. <laughs> <laughs> he's done. There we go. That's why Greg is slinging the one lots. The wife found his trading account. Uh, Tim, will, Tim will know that pain soon. That's called the uh, wife trading collar. <laughs> <laughs> That's called the don't tell the wife about your other trading account. Uh, look at this yes. one over here with the one lots. <laughs> All the winners in here. Look at this one. Um, but yeah, speaking of uh, Apple, aside from uh, having a heart attack towards the end of the day due to our erroneous show notes, Uncle Mike, what do you uh, what do you make of these uh, recent gaps in good old AAPL? I don't. You know, I'm. This is. I'm getting towards the end of my run on Apple. It's been a great run, and I've dealt with much grief from all of my co-hosts on the show being in it as long as I have on the whole way up. But I, I'm towards the end of my run on it, I think. It's one where originally my thought was having it go to 700. It made it up to 640. And I think that what's concerning about Apple is the fact that once it hit that $600 billion market cap, I believe it was last week, that kind of it, it went up so high it found new ways of finding resistance it didn't find resistance by any chart by any means but it was like as soon as it hit that 6 billion 600 billion dollar market cap it came back and with that i think you could make a case for support at 580 at apple but i don't know it's one where i'm going to be very tightly hedged uh, over these next few days and i'm i'm going i'm going shopping tomorrow for a very tight way of hedging this earnings announcement yeah you know you, you joke and we did give you some grief about uh, having apple all this way but it's been a relatively pain-free ride for the most part it's been a generally one-way trip most of the way up you didn't have a lot of vacillation in there you didn't have a lot of opportunities even to use a lot of those hedges that you had lying to the downside so from a from a pain and uh uncertainty perspective apple has certainly been a relatively carefree ride up until this point but maybe now this is the the future of apple going forward where suddenly we have a much more much more volatile ride a much more many more intraday swings and it's not exactly the uh, the pain-free experience it used to be so maybe it is time if it is reaching your uh, your pain threshold then maybe it is time to, at the very least you're right tighten up those those puts and then if you get stopped out on the downside or you get put you get a you get you know your puts get hit on the downside say la vie you're on the sidelines for a while yeah it is and it's one where the biggest honestly the, the you know what the biggest pain has been on the way up is that having people have to go on margin to pay for all the hedges rolling this up so many times i mean it's like the account value obviously goes higher but just when you're rolling up calls and rolling up puts as often as we have we've been able to capture a pretty decent chunk of this upside but still when something goes from the 200s to the 600s it's going to it's a lot of work but yeah definitely no complaints on this whatsoever so just to reiterate, for Uncle Mike and the rest of the listeners out there, yes, Apple is indeed after the close on the 24th. <laughs> so no more, no pain. But speaking of uh, after the close, we do have some names coming out right now, including uh, a lot of tech, a lot of tech names today. We have uh, AMD coming out. Looks like they're still pretty much about unched in the after hours. So either the earnings are a whopping. Uh, Whopping, no, uh, no one cares, or they haven't come out yet. We also had Bank of America before the open today, and they were down about nearly 2% on the day today. So people not exactly loving the Bank of America earnings. Looks like most of the earnings still have yet to come out, and one of the bigger names on the old docket for today. And actually, this seems like it's relatively early for me. Microsoft usually seems like they come later in the cycle to me. At least that's what my perception of them has always been that. But they're announcing today. Usually they announce on a Friday, too. That's always been my uh, my perception on on Microsoft. They announce on a Friday, which was always annoying because they came in during expiration a lot of times, and it made it very fun to close out positions in Microsoft going into expiration. I more than once had to uh, 
chew out a few traders for who worked for us for not uh, closing out some errant puts or calls when there was after expiration, but you still had a few hours when it was anyone's guess before the earnings came out, and that always made Microsoft a fun one to trade. But today, coming out after the after uh, the bell, the at the money straddle, Microsoft closed at almost 31, even as they are wont to do these days. People love pinning Microsoft, and it closed the at the money at April straddle is about 83 cents. They are trading about 92 cents higher in the after hours right now. So looks like. Microsoft actually starting to move a bit in earnings. We've joked in the past that this was one of the most no-brainer premium sells going into earnings for the past decade almost, that this one never really moved much at all coming out of earnings except for a few errant circumstances here or there. But now it looks like last earnings and this earnings, they both seem to be moving outside of their straddle range, which is a... A relatively unheard of phenomenon for Microsoft. So Microsoft right now trading about 31,890, 31,85 or so. Mr. T now, now that you're back in the game and off of your extended European holiday, uh, what was lighting up your own tape here? What were people calling up about today over at OX? Uh, people were talking about Apple. Um, there was a lot placed on Apple today. Uh, FFIV was pretty active. Um, I mean, that stock was up, you know, over 5% there. Bank of America was another active one. And then Qualcomm. Um, so those were our most active, active equities. Um, you know, and as far as the futures are concerned, uh, you know, it was oil. People were definitely, you know, looking to see where oil was headed, which was lower. And not too many natural gas players here at this price level. You know, maybe thought... Somebody would be swinging for the fences, but yeah, you know, pretty much it was the energies today and in, in the commodities that uh, people were talking about. No big surprise there. Those are kind of the main culprits over at OX these days. Well, what else were you guys watching in this uh, earnings frenzy of a day today? Andrew, anything uh, you 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 know you uh, doing stuff anywhere of interest? You know what? I I actually I had students most of the day. The pit report I did put on a small TLT diagonal. Uh, actually, I got filled on it. It was a, kind of a play to short the TLT, but leave a little upside uh, because I am trying to figure out how to fade um, <laughs> to fade this little TLT rally we've had because it's it's been a little defying gravity. I have to admit that the movement up here is feeling strange to me. As far as earnings goes, I was just waiting for Microsoft. I think that is the cheapest stock in the universe. Really, the, you're, revenues, you're... the revenues grow. I mean, look at the revenue. Grow. I'm going to talk about fundamental stuff, but <laughs> it is cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah, you know they do make money. That's one of the funny things. They're not exactly the sexy cap, the sexy company that Apple is or Google, or some of the other ones that catch a lot of the the media love and the tech love. Yet they make money quarter after quarter, and uh, you know it's well, those... real revenue growth. And yeah. they have no. I, I just. That's going to be my next. I want. A, I want a couple. Well, the market doesn't know what it wants to do right now. I think you know. I think we're higher by the end of the year than we are now. And I'm just. I'm looking for just two or three stocks that I think can grow like the twenty percent that I could sell put spreads and do all kinds of stuff against them. And I think that's one of the other ones. Another one I'm looking at is CHK as well. Uh, I think uh, you know the shenanigans with the CEO and all that. I, I had put on a small. Little, little trades in there but i mean those for me are the two the couple of equity i've got about five positions on but those are the little those are the guys that have, that have just been recently yeah you know did some of this near-term chk ball this on this move yes good old chk lighting up the old tape today too down well unched on the day had a big move yesterday and uh, the options uh, were reflective of that today we saw Name usually does about somewhere in the 50,000 contract range. They did nearly double that today. Closed 18 even on the day. So a lot of interest, a lot of players doing some Navabi size out in old Chesapeake Energy Corp today. That's one of your favorite holdings, isn't it, sir? <laughs> Chesapeake, no. But uh, yeah, it seems like that CEO definitely liked to have a good time and he liked to throw cash around, right? Oh, it was just a billion dollars. Come on. Well, whether you run an oil company or in the Secret Service, you like to have fun, right? The, that's, <laughs> that's the whole point, right? That's fine. With Chesapeake, I got I, I had a protective put, still do have a protective put in at 20. And this is one where I'm looking at that one to where you know, I have to 
in the next day before expiration, I have to make a decision as to whether or not I want to continue along the route of Chesapeake and think, okay, this is just a minor blip, uh, or is it time to admit my wrongs? And we haven't done too badly on Chesapeake just because we've sold just ridiculous amounts of premium on the way down with this. But it's one where I don't know at this point, I'm like, Tomorrow is going to be a Chesapeake morning uh, in the Tucson office, along with uh, amongst other things on expiration Friday. But this is one where I like the idea of having some natural gas exposure at this point, just because I don't see natural gas going to zero. Do I see it coming back to three and four dollars in the near term? No, but I don't know. A lot of interesting natural gas fascinates me right now. You are quite the gassy fellow. Are you playing? I knew I was. I was waiting for. <laughs> I was to. disappointed that Andrew didn't beat you to the punch on that one. He's far too polite and he's far too busy eating lobster to uh, make such a crude, crude comment. But uh, are you preferring CHK to UNG these days, or are you playing them both? Well, I'm. I haven't played UNG in five years, just because ever since the the original CFTC investigations came out. But it's one where. Uh, well, I shouldn't say no. very seldom will I, would I ever play UNG for anything, but yeah, I would definitely, f- for investing in natural gas, I would definitely prefer to use natural gas stocks over uh, UNG that or over the underlying, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, yes. UNG is a piece of junk. I agree. <laughs> UNG is the greatest short vehicle ever. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It a couple just, of years you know, ago, there was a, a couple of years ago, I actually, it was like three years ago, I played it to where you could set up this collar to where it was mathematically impossible to lose money on it. I, I did that. But other than that, I haven't played natural gas in probably five years, or I'm sorry, UNG in probably five years. I like that trade. I can't lose money on it. I would like to do that trade. It was mathematically impossible to lose money. That's how messed up UNG was. All right. I'm. I'm giving Tucson my money. Do you got any more of those? Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, only, I only, it only happened once for one client. It was just, I think I just caught some type of weird fill of some sort. Well, hey, sometimes that happens. I, so I can't, they don't, they, it's my UNG trade over the course of the last five years. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, the UNG has definitely been a, you know, when you split reverse two for one all the time or four for one or five for one, that is a recipe for disaster. So I mean, it's the okay. They're gonna they're gonna market higher so I can sell it. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a great. Anyway, so speaking I'm just of missed the last leg <laughs> since fifteen. That's all. Speaking of ridiculous, it is time to dive right into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, and that funky tune means it's time once again for the odd block. This is, of course, the portion of the show where we discuss not just Uncle Mike Tussaw, who is indeed quite odd, but also the unusual activity that is lighting up the old tape today. We're going to kick things off with uh, too bad Mr. Grigas isn't here because he loves these Web 2.0 names, but good old Pandora Media, ticker symbol P. These are, of course, the web streaming audio guys. They closed today at about $8.69, up about $0.63, or nearly 8% on the day. It was an active one for good old P. And this is the name that does. They're usually around 4,000 contracts a day. They did over 20,000 today. So a lot of folks flocking into Pandora, apparently thinking that there's gold in that streaming radio audio hills because a lot of call buyers flocking into good old P today. <clears throat> this is the name that's down about 15% so far for the year and almost over 65% since they hit their peak of $26 back after their IPO in June of last year. So a lot of people obviously thinking that this name is deeply oversold. We saw a lot of people flocking into upside calls, starting with these June 9s. People picked up nearly 7,000 of those today versus an open interest of just over 300 contracts. So a whopping amount 
of opening paper here in the June expiration. Uh, most of these calls were picked up for about, looks like, 76 cents. We also saw people scooping up some June 8s, about a thousand of those going up for about a buck ten a piece. So a combination, roughly nine, ten thousand contracts going up in total on those uh, couple of strikes. And also about nearly a thousand of the June 10s. Very, 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 very optimistic folks pop picking up those for about 55, 60 cents a piece. So a lot of love coming in on the June upside calls. Of course, Andrew, I'm assuming you're not a huge fan of these because these are these are what we like to talk about all the time. These uh, essentially naked upside buys. There's no uh, no savviness really to any of these. No, uh, they're not really doing stuff, as you like to say. They are not. They are walking into the buzzsaw of theta. Maybe earnings can hold them up. Uh, I was just looking at some vol numbers. They spike vols up like 20, 20, 20 points today on that. So, I mean, uh, you know, you look at it and you think, okay, maybe an earnings play. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It seems like they're paying up. There isn't a lot of savviness there. I have to say that's not high on my, my savvy scale. Time to come in and sell that vertical. Take advantage of all that. Uh, I, I think that's kind of what I'm going to do. That's where you're leaning. I, I can see where you're going. I can see where you're going a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where any floor trader would go on that is to come on the other side. And uh, I, I, it's, it's funny because it's one of Sebastian's favorite things on the pit report. Some guy goes out. He puts this recommendation on some the public comes in and pumps an option up to all ridiculous heights, and then you have all these spreads for nothing <laughs> against it to get the same effect, essentially. So Yeah, you know, we, yes. we, we talk about that all the time, how much we used to love when whatever random newsletter X recommend, recommends buying put Y in the S or whatever the case may be. And it was just a it was a free for all that day as these 10 lots <laughs> and 20 lots would trickle in all day long to the tunes of tens of thousands, tens of thousands of contracts and people just buying things. Uh, sight unseen, premium unconscious, volatility unconscious, and it created a lot of spreading opportunities, and that's exactly what you're seeing right that's here as well as the spreading like peanut butter and jelly. Follow the lemmings, but don't go off the cliff. Perhaps uh, put a parachute on. I'm not sure what the analogy would be there for selling. <laughs> Perhaps go the other way and climb back up the cliff and uh, catch all that delicious lemming juice on the way down. There we go. How about that? <laughs> That's a very uncomfortable analogy. So with that, I think we shall close out the discussion of Pandora for now and move on, move away from the new media and back into the world of old, old media with CBS, ticker symbol QQZ, no, ticker symbol CBS. And these, this is the name that closed at about $33.28 today, up about $0.36 cents on the day, or about 1%. They usually do about 4,000 contracts a day. They did a little over 6,000. So it wasn't a huge from a volume perspective, but it was a lot of interest today in the May 34s here in CBS. We saw a lot of people flocking in, about 4,500 of those traded on the day. So that's pretty much their entire ADV in one strike's worth of volume today. So a lot of people coming in betting on uh, there's a future is rosy apparently in the land of CBS. It's an open interest of under 1,000. So this is all opening paper for the most part. And the bulk of these trades were, uh, were very early. They went up in the first 20 minutes of the session for about 70 cents. So someone came in today with an agenda. They wanted to pick up some, uh, they wanted to pick up some, some gamma, some front month or soon to be front month here in uh, CBS and they wanted it any way they could get it. So they scooped up about 4,500, like we said, of these May 34s. We're seeing, uh, let's said CBS so far this year is up about 20 percent year to date. In order for these calls to really pay off, this thing's got to rally to a new multi-year high of 34.70, another four and a half percent or so on already uh, already lofty heights of where it's currently trading. So another, I think we have a narrative today in the odd block of people coming in and picking up upside calls. That seems to be the trade du jour today. And last but not least, in the old odd block, keeping Mr. making Mr. Tim Navabi happy, who is such a big fan of the natural resources names, we have XCO, which is Exco Resources, Inc. This is a Dallas, Texas-based energy company. This thing was up pretty strongly today, up about nearly 8% to $6.22. And this one popped up because it was a relatively strong 
volume day on this one. They do usually 4,000 contracts a day. They did nearly 24,000 today. So a lot of people flocking in yet again, following that same narrative of the rest of the old odd block today. People picking up upside calls. Well, actually, in this case, some in-the-money calls, too. However, they could get them. We saw a lot of people flocking in to the May 6s. Now, these were actually... These were at these were out of the money calls earlier today, <laughs> but this thing rallied so hard today that these are now in the money calls. We saw about 15,000 of these going up today on a previous open interest of just 1,400 contracts. So this was a substantial move into these May 6s. We saw the bulk of these going up in two large blocks, a 5,400 block and a nearly 4,000 block. Both of them around 45 cents. So these these guys are uh, already looking pretty good. They're pretty good. They're up about 33 cents from, or 33 percent, I should say, from where they were picked up earlier in the day, thanks to this big swing in Exco. We have earnings coming out after the first. And not surprisingly, a nice bump in the old implied vol across the board due to all this rabid buying activity here in uh XCO front month at the money volatility going up about oh, roughly uh, seven eight points here and uh, just a lot of a lot of love here in XCO. You guys, Mike, Tim, or Andrew, and you guys watch this one. I know you guys like playing into in and out of the energy sector. Haven't seen anyone in this one. Yeah, not on the top of the list for me. So Tim, this was not you slinging the fifteen thousand lot here in uh, XCO. No. I thought that second block had all the Nababi hallmarks. And maybe not the first 5,000 lot, but that second 4,000 lot came in. It looked like it had a little beret on it that I thought that just looked like something you were doing here. <laughs> no, not at all. Not for me. And, of course, with a name this uh, cheap, the, a lot of these options plays are really just a ways to get deltas uh, in the underlying. Could be a, could, This name is not exactly a liquid underlying name. Let's see, they do a about uh, six thousand, I'm sorry, six million shares a day. So if you're looking for some extra deltas, I'm, I'm sure this guy scooping up these May sixes was looking to put on some uh, additional deltas, and he, he found that strike to be his choice du jour today. Andrew, you play around in XCO a lot? No, no, but I'm looking at it tomorrow, like time, cheap time spread. Yeah. You know, so. Whenever someone bids up, it should be should point out someone was playing in the uh, June 7 and 8 puts out here in XCO as well. We saw about 2,300 of the June 8 puts going up. Of course, that's on open interest of 2,300. It looks like that was a closing trade. And then also yeah. also about 1,000 of the June 7 puts going up today as well. So a relatively active day in a name that usually does only a few thousand contracts a day. People trading all the way out uh, and some size even out into September, 500 lots going up and stuff like that. So... A lot of a lot of players diving into Exco today, and you're right. When someone comes in and bids up one month in that term structure, that does open up a lot of time spreading possibilities throughout the rest of that name. So a lot of opportunities to do stuff in this one as well. A lot of opportunities across the board here in the old odd block as the lemmings pile into the <laughs> vol and they leave the lemming catchers or those who climb up the cliff to. Uh, to pick up the pieces and spread and have a lot of fun that way. So yeah, we could almost do a whole option insider show on you can follow the recommendation, but pick the pick another option or pick another strategy. We'll call it. We'll, yeah, we'll call it. Take the other side. <laughs> we'll yes. Just uh, spreading Thanks. off all of this, uh, all of these, all of this one-sided paper. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's one of these things where I think there's a lot of scooping now with natural gas. Oil, even even though oil really hasn't gone up, it hasn't really made any fresh highs in a while, it's still $100 barrel in oil. Everybody is drilling everywhere. You know, if you're any company anywhere on the planet that can drill anything, you're drilling for $100 a barrel oil. I mean, you got to be realistic. So I don't know. I think this whole whole section sector is totally undervalued, but maybe that's just mine because I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that with all that talk of drilling, we're going to close out the old odd block today and dive right into the express block. 
the Express Block, brought to you by Options Express. Options Express lets you trade where and when you want for every level of trading, from advanced charting, free daily trading ideas, and free educational resources. Options Express is the online broker for all traders. Best of all, Options Express allows you to trade stocks, options, and futures all in a single account on powerful yet easy to use trading platforms, including mobile devices. Visit OptionsExpress.com/oxradio for your free account. Options Express. Russ is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. All right, and welcome to the Express Block. This is, of course, the portion of the show where Mr. Tim Navabi holds court and the rest of us just bask in awe and wonder. So, Mr. Tinov, what do you have for us to bask at today? It's getting prepared for expiration. Um, you know, expiration is tomorrow, and, you know, like you uh, mentioned earlier and kind of what's going on uh, the last few days, uh, some of the volatility and some of the earnings. So, you know, there's a lot of price swing movements. Um, so, you know, what that means is that you got to re- keep a really good eye on, on your position, uh, especially if you have call spreads, put spreads, you know, that expire tomorrow and they're, they're close to the money, they're near the money, they're in the money, um, maybe some something had earnings tonight. So, again, what's most important, and I always just can't say it enough, and I, I deal with it a lot on the phone, is is being prepared for expiration. You know, it, 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 it's not just a check in on the price, you know, on Thursday to see if you have to get out on Friday. Um, you know, you may have to check the price on your stock you know, on the underlying, you know, maybe maybe two or three times tomorrow, you know, once in the morning, once in the mid afternoon, once in the late afternoon, um, you know, right up against your strikes to sort of, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, if you are going to take stock that you want the stock that you can afford the stock. And, and, you know, if you have a spread, uh, again, you know, know that, uh, you know, if the stock is in between the two strike prices, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit of work there, you know, and it's different, you know, across the board, whether it's a put spread, whether it's a call spread, you know, can you, can you sell it in the money, uh, call and then be short a naked call is that gonna is that gonna be allowed in your account um you know all of these types of things really have to to be seriously considered uh before expiration because you know these are a lot of the types of calls that we do get and you know it always seems like we are doing some sort of education uh even you know to many of many of the same customers that have been here for a long time you know on what they have to do come expiration so you know this is when our call queue kind of gets gets big uh people are waiting on the phone you know essentially to ask some basic you know expiration uh questions you know all they really need to do is just really be prepared you know know your position know the underlying you know know if you want to buy the stock or not or be short the stock and you know th- we have a real good page on our website and it's called uh expiration process and risks uh, and it goes through again, kind of everything that I just mentioned there, uh, that you need to be aware of on expiration. You know, you should probably bring up too that if you are trading one of these names, and we always preach on the show, close it out. When in doubt, close it out. Going into expiration, yes. that is usually the safest road to hoe. And people think that's you know whatever a coward's way out, but that is exactly what the pros do on a regular basis. We on the floor would very rarely go into expiration with any sort of sizable position because it is very much Vegas at that point what's going to happen, and you don't want that uh, that uncertainty in your position. But if you are one of those people who, for whatever, whatever reason, is not closing out your positions going into expiration, and you have, a, let's say, a name like Microsoft back in the day, which would come out on a Friday after earnings, you should be cognizant that you do still have a few hours of play after the Friday close where anything could happen. And if you do have, let's say, upside or downside that is open on this name, particularly from a short perspective, uh, you should definitely watch the after hours because it could something could happen in the after hours move. Let's say an earnings announcement comes out. We are in the height of earnings season right now, and that could move the the market. Either you know it could be your name, it could be a competitor in their arena, and that could send your your underlying moving in some crazy directions in the after hours. And you're just if you turn off your uh, your trading screens at three o'clock and go home after expiration, then uh, you might be missing a big move. It might be happening. You can plan accordingly, hedging in the after hours or whatever. So it's just another thing to be. Con- 
cognizant of if you're one of the few who, for whatever reason, is still not closing out your positions going into expiration, even after Mike Tussauds' lengthy treatise on the subject last week. <laughs> one of my uh, favorite examples, you know, is uh, a customer who was short put uh, in Amazon. And, you know, those puts closed out of the money. Monday morning, he's owning a lot of Amazon. And he's really unhappy about it. And he calls up and says, hey, stock's out of the money. What are you doing to me? You know, first of all, we didn't do it. This person who owned those puts decided, you know, they're going to sell them. Uh, you know, and through the random process, guess what? You're the owner. So, you know, you know, I think it's also, too, knowing that if you don't own an option, you you really don't have the control that you think you have. Um, doesn't matter if it's, you know, out of the money, at the money, I mean, you don't own it. Uh, so it's it's up to that person to make that, that decision on what they want to do. So, you know, I mean, I have seen people, you know, try to just save a little bit of money, you know, by not buying an option back, but it, it'll wind up costing them later um, because, you know, they'll get exercised. I, I really haven't seen too many people, you know, try to save money on op on expiration day. And we're talking, you know, a little bit of money, whether it's a commission, uh, a couple cents on a spread, you know, versus their account, which, you know, could be anywhere from, you know, 2,500 to, you know, 250,000. You know, people just ha have an issue with, you know, spending a little bit of money to get out. Uh, and I say, you know, when you really sort of put that money up against the risk that you're you're taking over a weekend it's really not worth it and i just haven't seen seen someone i haven't seen it work out <laughs> for someone who said yeah yeah i'm glad i didn't get out of that uh or i didn't want to pay the two cents well now it's at four cents you know so Exactly. Well, thank you for that, sir. Definitely words sure. of wisdom to keep in mind as we approach that fateful day known as Expiration Friday. All right. That is going to do it for the old Express Block. And now we're going to dive right into the Tucson Block, a.k.a. the Strategy Block. Hmm. The Strategy Block. Right, and that fancy music means it's time once again for the strategy block, the portion of the show where Uncle Mike Tussaw shares his wit and wisdom from an options perspective. And today, Uncle Mike, my birdie network has been quite active again this week, and they're telling me that they think you're going to talk about what to do, how to get back into a stock after you're called out of it. Now, can you, can you confirm or deny that my birdie network is accurate today? I think they're back. They're back on now. You must have. Were, were you just shafting them in pay, or were you punishing yeah, I, them? Yeah, I, I had I had rationed the bird seed a bit, and I didn't go over very well. So I have it back at the no, the normal level again, and now my now my tidbits are flowing quite well. The workers will arise against you if you don't take care of them. Apparently, even birds. Yes, even those birds. There's they're greedy birds. I will say that. Not angry birds yet, but they're greedy. That's good. That's good. You need to get the ones like tw like Tweety Bird that are pretty pretty f just fine taking on with anything just so long as the cats don't get them but. uh anyway today i'm sure this has probably happened to a lot of listeners and this kind of came to mind today if you've gotten called out on a covered call and with that how do you get back into a stock now first off before you're even selling a covered call you have to be ready to get called out that's a very real risk of getting into a stock. So if you need to hold on to the stock for tax purposes, you need to do one of two things. You need to either make sure, number one, that you don't sell covered calls against the stock, or, or number two, make sure you're watching that thing all the time uh, just to be safe. Now, in reality, I understand that uh, if it's three weeks before expiration and the stock just goes in the money by a penny, it's, you're probably not going to get called out. And by probably, I mean the chances are probably about 99%. Uh, but my point is, is that you need to be prepared to not own the stock in some way, shape, or form if you are selling covered calls. 
So what do you do when you get called out? Well, first off, I kind of like getting called out, quite frankly, because it means I made the most money I possibly could. So with that, there are situations where I like getting called out. There's ones that I don't, like Apple, for example. I've been rolling that up. That's kind of been like a second job to me quite on its own these last couple of years. But we got called out of XLY, consumer discretion, consumer discretionary ETF. And right now, I think we might be headed for a little bit of a pullback. So what I did today, at least in XLY anyway, what I did today, this is one of our core holdings that we want to get back into in our covered call slash short put portfolio. A couple of things that you can do. One thing is sell a put to get back into it, uh, meaning I could sell maybe a 41 or a, a 42 or something like that. But you know, I didn't really want to do that because of the fact that the premium just didn't quite match up the way that I wanted to. So what I did is I went out to June, and I would be more than happy to own XLY at the 39 level. So what I did was I bought, and let's just assume that I own 100 shares. It's, or we're doing this on much more than 100 shares, but we'll just assume 100 shares for sake of easy math. Bought one 43 put for June, for approximately 85 cents. Got filled at, I think it was actually 86 cents is what we got filled at today on that. And then simultaneously sold two 41 puts for 45 cents. So we actually got a credit of approximately four cents on that trade. So with that, not playing it for the credit, and with commissions, I'm just assuming it is an even money trade, but here's what we've created. We now can participate in the downside of XLY from 43 to 41 without any 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 upside risk. So if it goes up, it doesn't cost us anything. We just broke even. If it goes down, we get to participate from 43 to 41 at no cost. Once it goes to 41, we're obligated to buy the stock with one of those puts because one of the puts is part of a bear put spread. The other one is actually just a short put. So with that being said, if it were to go to 41, right there, I have $2 created out of thin air at expiration, of course. In the meantime, it doesn't always work that way. So with that, let's say it goes to 40.99, and I get assigned on that short put, and the 43.41 bear put spread cancels each other, the options cancel each other out. That's $2 in my pocket, and I'm owning the stock that I'm happy to own anyway at the 41 level. So with that in mind, that theoretically reduces my cost basis to 39. More than happy to own the consumer discretionaries at 39. And with that in mind, this is kind of a way to do a short put on steroids. Now, if it continues to go up, there's a lot of things you can do in terms of turning this into a credit spread. Uh, perhaps we can buy to close the 41s at a lesser cost and then roll it up to 45, and then you're creating a, a bull put credit spread. I've act, that's one that I prefer not to do, but that is a choice that's available. So with that in mind, you do have choices when you get called out. Being called out, Mr. Chusaw, must be something you're quite familiar with, both in options and in life, sir. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. Uncle Mike Tusaw, and that's going to do it for the strategy block. And now we're going to dive right into Around the Block. Around the block. And speaking of what we're watching in the coming sessions, just one last quick rundown before I toss it to Mr. Tinov here of what we're seeing in earnings. Looks like AMD was a resounding meh where they closed at about eight bucks. They're trading about 12 cents higher in the after hour. So not a whole heck of a lot, a whole heck of a lot of action there. But Microsoft up about a dollar still. So that is a relatively sizable move for Microsoft. Like, like I said, I can't remember over the last decade how many times they outpaced that front month straddle. Not many. So uh, this is definitely, if they if they hold these gains going into the open tomorrow, this is definitely a, a sizable development for them. And it looks like the old uh, Southwest Airlines, also a resounding meh. Yeah, but you know what? It's an airline. What yeah. airline is ever going to come out and say, we made size this quarter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, a friend of mine, my old uh, trading partner, when I had one of the best lines ever about the airlines there. <laughs> They're the mediocre girl at the ugly girl dance. You know, they're just, they're never 
great. Yeah, you, might, you might as well just, never be great. just trade oil direct and get rid of the middleman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of oil, Mr. Tinov, what are you watching coming up here around the block? Uh, well, it looks like there'll be some news, uh, some newsworthy events next week. You know, I mean, I, I don't expect any sort of rate increase by the FOMC on the 25th, but it will be interesting to sort of hear their language, you know, and any sort of change. Um, there's uh, consumer confidence next week. Uh, not that that's a big tradable number there. Um, and GDP on the 27th. So just some newsworthy events next week is kind of what I'm looking at. I like the fun non-farms we had last time where they came on a day that the market was closed. That made it fun and exciting because it was a totally. it was a completely <laughs> one-off type of event that we we're not really that used to. But these these regular numbers, they're just kind of ho-hum. And speaking of ho-hum, unfortunately, that is going to bring to a close this episode of the Option Block. I, of course, want to thank all of my cohorts, my partners in crime for joining me on the old program today, starting off. With the lovely Uncle Mike Tussauds from St. Charles, Illinois. Uncle Mike, what are you watching around? I'm sorry, what is coming up in the land of KYO that may interest and or intrigue our listeners? Well, continue to subscribe to our newsletter, folks. It's a free weekly newsletter in the know. We have a lot going on, and uh, please continue to subscribe to it. In terms of webinars, the Apple webinar the other night was a huge success. Thank you, everyone, for showing up for that. It was uh, We had a lot of fun with it. And uh, we'll have some more webinars out in the next couple weeks, but for this coming week, I'm giving my voice a rest. A big turnout for an Apple webinar. Uh, what, a, what a surprise. <laughs> I know it's shocking, isn't it? People actually like that name. I don't know what you're, what, how, you, how you stumbled upon that magic, sir. I was up till 4 a.m. that night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank not you. Really, not that bad, but it was still it was a it was a great show. We had a lot of fun with it. All right. Thank you for that, Uncle Mike. And now, Mr. Lobster, what is coming up in the land of the pit that may intrigue our listening audience? We have free webinars on the weeklies. We just had one. It was a great webinar uh, uh, yesterday. It's uh, posted on our website. Just go to the home page and off you go. You should be able to find our, and it's really teaching people how the weeklies work. Uh, and each webinar will be, six, um, uh, there'll be a little bit more advanced, like beginning, intermediate, and advanced on how you actually, how the weeklies trade, how they're traded, how to understand the contract. And try to avoid doing a lot of dopey stuff. So let, let me um, guess, these are going to be all about buying size premium in the weeklies, pretty much? Yes. The moment that they <laughs> list. The moment that oh. bell rings on Thursday morning, you buy and you don't stop buying until the following until Thursday. Until your head caves in, yes. <laughs> well, we had some questions about people don't like trading them because there's no open interest in them. And I go, well, since they were just listed this morning, Mark said, how can they have any open interest? So I think there's a lot of, well, let's just call it shady information about open interest. Yeah, we had that's, um, that's that question we had a couple weeks ago on the show here, too, someone writing in about open interest and how that should inform his trading. And he asked specifically about the weeklies. Means yes. nothing. <laughs> Let me say it. Means nothing. What matters is, is there a bid and an offer when you get in and is there a bid and an offer when you get out? You know, around expiration, open interest could produce some gravitational effects. But other than that, I mean, you you want to look at the trade on its merits, not the fact that somebody else has already bought 4,000 of them, because <laughs> I'm not convinced that those guys are right an awful lot of the time, or even divining the direction or whatever. So I just, we would like people to focus on other things besides open interest. Yeah, o OI <laughs> is kind of an ancillary factor. We look at it a lot, obviously, to try to trace activity here on the on the odd block, and for those purposes, it's useful. But for plotting, oh, yeah, for plot, sure. yeah, plotting your own trading, I mean, if, if the bid offer should tell you most of the things you need to know and the depth around that. Mm -hmm. And if you if you it doesn't matter how much is on the open interest, if the, if the thing's 30 cents wide, it's 30 cents wide. Nothing's going to save you there, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Nothing's going to save your, you know, save your bacon on that. So <laughs> anyway. People also That's, need to know there are no uh, week three options. I, I get that kind of often. Where's the weekly? Where's the <laughs> weekly? 
Why is your interest know. so big? I, I don't want the monthly. I want the weekly. Well, it's kind of the same thing. That, there. that just speaks to the ridiculous way they've rolled out these products. People still don't <laughs> get it a year and a half later. That's partly yeah. the consumer's par- fault and partly just the idiotic way that these things have been in- unleashed upon the pro- upon the public. They should just do it the way that the future side does. It lists the whole strip at once, lists the entire month. That makes a heck yeah. of a lot of sense. You know, That leads to a much more nuanced use case for the product. People actually tend to sometimes buy those things because they can see the whole strip at once and they can plan accordingly they could spread they could buy the far off they can buy maybe the week four right the week one week two week three you can do a lot of fun things with those whereas this kind of this frenzy that they do on the equity option side which just listen here here you go bell rings go crazy it kind of facilitates this frenzy of selling that we're seeing all the time and uh, Which I don't want them to change it yet because I kind of like how they trade. So, <laughs> well, you have to do a new webinar too, so that would that would. Yeah, uh, don't don't screw up what is there's some. Decent all right, let, let Mark and Andrew there. finish their webinar series first, then completely Let's revamp. Finish the webinar series, show people how to use them, how they are now. <laughs> And then change your mind later. There you go. And then you can have a whole other series of webinars to uh, promote. On the new ones. Exactly. So they're keeping you in business by doing that. All right. They are. They're helping us. Yes. More products do not hurt us. Yes. And last but certainly not least, Mr. t aside from dreaming wistfully of baguettes in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, what else is on your mind and what's coming up in the land of OX? Uh, OX, we've got some upcoming educational events, um, and I just kind of, you know, want to remind people uh, that you know the workshops they're free, um, and seats are available. You can always register, you know, at, at the site, or you can give us a call, and, and we can do that. And you you also can bring a guest if you want. So, you know, just some reminders there about our workshops. Uh, we do have a workshop in Cleveland. Uh, that's on the 21st, Saturday, from 8 to 3.30 at the Crown Plaza, Cleveland South. We have one on the 28th in San Antonio uh, from 8 to 3.30. That one is at the Westin La Cantera Resort. Uh, and then there is one on May 12th in San Diego from 8 to 3.30, San Diego Marriott Mission Valley. Hey, if you need a plus one for the San Diego one, sign me up. I uh, wouldn't mind a nice little trip out to uh, sunny Southern California. Just don't mind if I don't make the seminar, but I'll I'll come out there and say hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mr. T. Nov. And that is going to close out this episode of the Option Block. We, of course, want to thank all of you out there for downloading and streaming and subscribing to this program and making it such a success. And by all means, don't forget to send us your listener questions like we discussed earlier about the weeklies and all sorts of other fun questions we've been receiving lately. You can send them, you can post them in our forum on theoptionsinsider.com. Just go on over to the forum page, scroll on down to the listener questions for the Option Block segment. You can post them there. You can send them to us via Twitter. Just follow us at options on Twitter or send us a direct message to at options. We get a lot of Twitter questions these days. Also on Facebook, facebook.com slash options insider. You can find us a number of different ways. You can just shoot us an email to questions at the options insider.com. However you want to get in touch with us, you can do it. And if your questions are interesting, we may just answer them on the air. So that is indeed going to do it for this episode, but we'll see you next time right here on the option block. Become a part of the Option Block. Just visit www.theoptionsinsider.com slash forum to post a question for the hosts. You can also submit questions to twitter.com slash option block or leave a voicemail at 312-544-9356. Make it interesting and your question just might make it on the air. The Options Block is property of the Options Insider Incorporated. All rights reserved. of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com radio or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes.